were responding to a female underneath a train. Tonight on Save My Life. She's on her belly. Oh, no. Inside Boston hospitals, as good as it gets when trauma comes knocking. I walked right off the platform and my addiction wants me dead. You had fallen, you don't remember that at all? No. It looks like you have a bleed in your head. Seeing how you hold a brother like that, that's tough, man. Stab wound to the anterior oh. chest. We have to worry about the lungs. <laughs> I thought I wasn't real, he was pretending. I don't want to be cut open. Do you want to ride him? We don't know where the bullet is. Right now, the primary concern is stopping the bleeding and saving his life. Human response to roll over. He's alive. Open your eyes. Pilot operations, Ben 4. Roger, Ben 4. 50 year old, 130 kilos, non intubated. It's a fall with a pelvic fracture, hypothermia. Copy, Ben 4. We got a med flight call saying they're bringing in a gentleman who took a, a significant fall from a ladder. It sounded like there was quite a few internal injuries, but we're not entirely sure. It's a fall from apparently a good height. Has some mental injuries. Question: RP bleed. One, two, three. Jump on a ladder with 30 feet, cut off the branch of a tree, and fell. Right now, his injuries consist of rib fractures. He's got a renal laceration on the left side. Airways intact. He's already flat down bilaterally. Is this painful where I'm pressing here? Ah, guy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Whatever you're doing over here. Abdomen or your arm? It's got the arm. Okay. Did you lose consciousness when you fell? No. You weren't able to get up? No. What were you doing on the ladder? I was doing some late season logging, trying to take a branch off. And it was 30 feet up, the ladder pivoted, and so did I. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz, hit the ground, and there we go. How long were you on the ground for? About an hour and a half. Who found you? My son, I heard him uh, slam his car door. I started shouting help. Okay. Is X-ray on there, Wayne? Yep. The sun just got here. Okay. I was panicking. When I first found him, I uh, took my coat off and I put it over him because he was obviously like really cold. He was impaled. You go through it thinking about things you wish you say or things that you never had the courage to say and you wish you said them. It's really the ultimate change of perspective. Oh, God. So the thing about blunt injuries is that we never really know where the injuries are on the inside. And that's kind of the dangerous thing about things like falling off a ladder. So basically what we're looking for is any signs of internal bleeding to his abdomen and to his pelvis. There may be a little bit of fluid in his stomach. Yeah, there possibly is some fluid in there. If there's any tremendous bleeding, we need to go to the OR. We're not sure yet. Yeah. We just got a call for an unknown aged female. She is at the bus station at Jackson T. T police are on scene with the patient and they believe it's some sort of overdose. Stop calling me like that. We're not pulling you. Let the Listen, let go of me. Relax for me. You think you're touching? I don't mean to be a pain, really. I just want to help you. I know. No, first of all, you gotta leave those on. I don't. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. And you're gonna keep them on, okay? And you're gonna behave. Who are you to grab me and bench me? Nobody's grabbing you. You're a liar. I'm gonna have marks on me. 
Honey, you gotta keep your shirt on, okay? Why, why are we taking our clothes off? Yeah, no, right. If you're working this job and somebody walks up and calls you a you're obviously going to be, you know, put off by it. You I like taking care of sick. Go yourself. Get your mother. You I keep telling myself it's not me. It's nothing personal. This is just a situation that they're in, and we try to help them. We try to do the best we can for them. You know, um, it somehow always manages to turn ugly. Why are you doing this? She yeah, denies using yeah, heroin, I'm on but she oh, admits using methadone, and she said she did I take some other drugs. So, but she was non-specific <laughs> with the other medicines that she took. It's funny because we look at their IDs and you look at the picture of who they were and who they are now and it's it's sad because it's a completely different person. You're in me for no reason. And I don't know who they were before, but I always envisioned that there was somebody really nice and you know, a really nice person who would probably give the shirt off their back. I do anything to you. So our patient who fell 30 feet from the ladder seems to have a pelvic fracture, which can be a pretty severe injury. When you fall 30 feet, you're landing with a lot of force, and that increases your risk for internal bleeding, and that's kind of what we worry about. So I heard what happened. Uh, uh, what? I have yeah. to tell Second you, unit. I just yeah. ordered my own chainsaw uh -huh. to do with, uh, deal with branches, and, and this doesn't bode very well. Because you don't get 30 feet up on a piece of plywood. Yeah. Well, once we get some of these things kind of squared away here, we're going to get some of your imaging, okay? Okay. All right. Hopefully, we'll shortly get some kind of a read on the CT scans. So we've just looked at his imaging. Obviously, has some very serious injuries, rib fractures, uh, injury to his kidney, and multiple pelvic fractures. But there wasn't any blood in his abdomen. So based on how far he fell, he's a very lucky guy, but still not completely out of the woods. Uh, we'll need to admit him to the intensive care unit for monitoring. I'm going to look this up a little bit, OK? Uh, Jim, Jim. I know, I know, I know. So at this point, your hip is broken in multiple places. Well, that explains why I'm having trouble moving my legs. Exactly. So. You're doing pretty well for a 30-foot fall, though. Blood pressure's good. Everything else looks OK. We'll get orthopedics to come and see him, see what they want to do about his hip fracture. Yeah. You know, if that's the worst of it, well, then lucky him, because, you know, He'll get through this and, and live to see another day. For paramedic one and ambulance 16. T1A 16, respond for the woman on the track. Trapped under the train at Mass Ave Station. T1, we have Mass Ave T for the person under the train. So right now we're responding to a report of a female underneath a train at the uh, MBTA Mass Ave train station. Could be somebody that um, fell underneath the train, jumped, pushed, slipped. Somebody that's under the influence of something that stumbled into the pit. How do you open up this door and the side? You get the store. She's like right in the middle. She's always with the road. She'll wait. She's conscious. She's conscious. Yeah. Oh, okay. Huh? No, no, she's actually right underneath, directly underneath the train. She's on her belly. Was she right under the center, guys? She's probably about maybe halfway, halfway down. Any significant injuries that you can see? All right. Hey, Hyman, can you move it on? Can't really see what she's got for injuries yet. We don't know how badly she's injured, but we got to really prepare ourselves for the worst.
We've got a woman pinned under a train. Can I offer a suggestion? If we slide the stokes in on this side, attach a rope, that way they can just move the board into it, and then we can pull her back. All right, you're going to put her on the platform side, right? I'm going to come up this way here with her. All right, 10 foot. Hey, Dave, you're coming down this way, right? Yeah. OK. All right. George, did you guys see any immediate injuries at all when you're down there? No. Okay. Okay. All right. Jerry, what happened? So I just spoke with my lieutenant. The call that he's at, a woman under a train. That's the same woman that we had the heroin overdose. We're not pulling you. Let the f go of me. Where she was combative and agitated. Hey, you lift you up. We can just lift her up on the bed. Okay. So right now she fell underneath the train. We're not really sure why. She's alert and talking right now. But she could have internal injuries, so we have a short window to get her to the hospital as quickly as possible. So we're going to see Frank, and he fell off a ladder while he was doing some tree trimming with a chainsaw, and we're going to go see how he's doing. How you doing? Well, considering all the breakage I had, I uh, feel pretty good. I told you that I was expecting my own chainsaw today oh, I to work on my trees. Uh, any words of advice for me? Yeah, don't fall out of trees. <laughs> Maybe next time. Have someone else do the wood for you? Or gonna keep going at it? Uh, it's kind of funny, because my, my son went home the next day and the tree fell out. He took it down. <laughs> he took it I down? I think he got revenge. Yeah, well, and, it's and good. And... He'll make a full recovery and be back to cutting down branches or whatever else he does with his free time. Well, the way my kids have pitched in with the yard work since they've been laid up. All right. Bye. If this will help me with the yard work once in a while, this may be worth it overall. <laughs> Yeah. Take care, dude. Any pain anywhere? Yes, I said! My leg and my back, get the off me. I want to get out of it. We're currently rushing to the hospital with a woman that fell on the track, so we actually found underneath the train. And time is of the essence. The call was a woman fell onto a train platform. She got hit by a train, which is uh, generally pretty bad. Okay, ready? One, two. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Please don't, no, I get a moment. Oh, my God. Deep breath, deep breath, you're doing good. Deep breath. So what happened? Hey, you tripped and fell? You almost got hit by a train. I, I, I did. It rolled over me. So it's just your right arm and your right leg that's hurting, huh? My back. And your back. What other medical problems do you have? The fact that she is talking at all is pretty impressive. How she fell on the, the platform is a whole other story. And any drug use? It's okay if you did. We just need to know so that... We don't give you any medicine that interacts with anything. Um, you know, I'm drug addicts. Nobody said you were. We just want to know if you took anything. No. No? Okay. All right. There's a chance that she was seriously injured, um, particularly into her head. We're going to take you over and get a CAT scan of your head, all right? I want to get some pictures of your arm. Your arm's really hurting. We want to make sure it's not broken. And if no, all of that's... thank you. I'm not doing it. Why not? I don't Well, right now you're you're sleepy. You're really sleepy, which makes us worry that there's something going on in your brain. So we're gonna take you over and we're gonna get a CAT scan. All right? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. 
I'm a lot of pain. I know. Okay. So if you just let us take the picture of your brain and prove to us that there's nothing going on inside your skull that's going to kill you. I can sign out AMA. I have that right. I'm telling you that I need to get this picture of your head. That's the way it has to be. All right? Okay. It's hard trying to convince her that the things we're doing are ultimately to make sure that there's nothing serious or life-threatening going on. Now, I understand that it seems to her like we're doing all of this stuff. She just wants to go home. She feels well. Oh. Just try to relax like that, okay? We're almost done. We just got all of her x-rays back on her CAT scan. Uh, she's got a really small fracture of her shoulder, but it's something that'll, that'll heal up pretty easily. Nothing wrong with her head. She's otherwise good to go. Hopefully she'll wake up and be grateful for what we did. And I doubt it, but I'm hopeful. Unfortunately, I relapsed today. And um, I walked right off the platform. Didn't know anything until the train went over me. And today really showed me what my addiction really wants me and my addiction wants me dead. And fortunately, my addiction didn't win today. So I have to, I have to straighten up. So it sounds like there's like, like like fairly young person coming in with a stab wound, uh, sort of like to the abdomen. Obviously, that has potential to be very very bad. Good morning from the city of Lynn. 41 year old male was involved in an altercation, unknown assailant. According to him, they started getting into a pushing match. He took an edged um, weapon and came up into the left quadrant here. Okay. No head, no neck pain. Hi, I'm David. I'm one of the emergency medicine residents. I'm going to be taking care of you. We're going to be looking you over head to toe. We're going to get you undressed. We're just going to take really good care of you. I need you to stick with me, OK? Deep breath in and out. He's got clear and equal bilateral press on. I have an O2 set of 99%. One centimeter lacerate stab wound to the left anterior oh. chest. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna take Looks like the really the only injury is that stab wound to the left side of his abdomen chest. It gets a little dicey because we have to then worry about the lungs and his breathing. We have to worry about the spleen, which is right there. So we have a bit of work to do to try to figure it out. Okay, what, we're, what I'm gonna do, okay, to try to determine whether or not we need to take you to the operating room. No. I'm gonna, I know, I don't wanna have to unless we need to, okay? I'm gonna numb this up with some lidocaine, okay? And then we're gonna just take a look here and see how deep the cut went. Can someone contact my family, please? Yeah. We have to figure out how deep and how bad that stab wound is. Um, right now, the stab wound looks okay. His belly is nice and soft, um, which is a good sign that there's not a lot of bleeding. Yes, Mom. Wasn't real. He was pretending because it's Halloween. Telling me that he's been stabbed. He's got a stupid sense of humor sometimes. Yeah, he's a jokester. But I know a lot of his jokes, so that's why this. I was like, at first, I was like, I don't think it's a joke. Just trying to figure it out. It's still kind of not real. To just do a little local examination of the wound to make sure he doesn't need to go to the operating room. Now they're going to do what we call a local wound exploration. So he, they numb up the area and they uh, will sort of do a mini surgery in the bay and see how deep that stab wound goes. Ah, what are you doing? Ain't nothing injured in there, man. No, I'm afraid there is, my friend. I'm afraid there might be. 
there's lots of things at risk. There's bowel at risk. There's diaphragm at risk. And so you have to sort of explore the abdomen and make sure the bowel's okay and make sure the diaphragm's okay. Can I refuse to be cut open? We won't unless it's what we need to do to save you, okay? I don't want to be cut open. I do not want to be cut open. I ain't no guinea pig. You can refuse, my friend, but if you get very, very sick, you might be forced into it, okay, to save your life. I do not want to be cut open. Why would they stab him? He's not a gang member. He's not a rich man. He barely has any work. He doesn't know why he was stabbed. I asked him why. He doesn't know. Oh. Right now. Oh, I can actually feel, guys, we've got penetration okay. here. We don't even need to go further. Yeah, we're done. So that means you have to cut my stomach? And we may we may have to, my friend. Why? Yeah. Our job is to communicate with him how serious this is and try to convince him to do what's what's best. Okay, minimum, you need an operation to make sure that you haven't ruptured your diaphragm. It's going to make my body look horrible. Your body's not going to be doing much better if you get really sick and die from this, okay? And it's it's that serious. And then how long would I be, be out of work for? You want to probably wait about a month to let your incisions heal. I'm homeless in the street. My girl's in the shelter trying to get us a place. We can, we can help you with that, okay? We can get our social workers to help you out. He's a hard working fun like nice guy he'll do whatever he can for you if he has it doctor i don't want you to open from here down to here for yeah. nothing if there is an injury we need to do the right thing to help you so if there's you an injury home. i can understand yeah but not just That's to fine. look when you can stick something in there That's fine. and just That's look fine. we'll put a scope in and we'll see your word as a prof as a human. My word as a human being. You gotta do what you gotta do. Please, please promise me that you will not cut me from here to here for nothing. We will not cut you from here to here for nothing. So he's about to go to the operating room. Uh, the wound exploration they did uh, looks like he violated what we call the peritoneum, which is the inside layer of the abdomen. So then you'll end up with bowel in your chest, which really doesn't do so well for you. BMC online. So, sounds like it's somebody who fell unconscious to the scene and then apparently became a little bit more oriented when EMS arrived. Could be he had a concussion and then woke up from it. But sometimes you can have, you know, obviously a head bleed in these type of circumstances. So we'll see what he looks like when he gets here. All right, so uh, we uh, responded to a 49-year-old male who fell approximately 20 to 30 feet off a roof. Uh, unresponsive. We have a large laceration to the right side of the occipital parietal area. We get him into the back of the truck. He is responsive to voice, but is very confused. Okay. Right. Sir, are you having any pain uh, anywhere? Ah. Oh, yeah, right there. Okay. Pain right Sorry. there. The yeah. Do you know what happened today? Uh, no. They said that you had fallen. You don't remember that at all? No. Do you know where you are right now? Hospital. Okay. Which hospital? Um, yeah, we'll just... Yeah. All right, you're at Boston Medical Center. All right. You know the day? No. Relax your right no. arm. Okay. Here. He's obviously confused, doesn't know what the month is, doesn't know where he is, doesn't know, doesn't know the day. Uh, some tenderness to the left upper chest. Oh, oh, oh. Be careful. Yeah. All right, sorry. 
he was complaining of some chest tightness. So just quickly looking to see if he's any blood anywhere, if he has any blood in his belly or blood around his heart. So no fluid in the left upper, no obvious pericardial fusion. Are we ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Ah. Ah. We've, we've got you. So he's got uh, maybe a four or five centimeter laceration to the left parietal region. So Tim was locked out of his apartment, so tried to get in through a, a method that they've used in the past, which is go up through the back roof. Any uh, pain where I'm pressing? No. My son, Tim, was waiting around the front door uh, to be notified when uh, Uncle Tim made his way into the apartment. All right, so it looks like you have a broken clavicle on that left side. So after a few minutes, he went around to the back of the apartment and saw Tim laying there uh, on the ground. Somewhat traumatic for, for me and for, for certainly for my son. We need to do a CAT scan to make sure there's nothing going on inside that we can't see, okay? That looks like he might have a little head bleed. It looks like you have a small bleed in your head, okay? Sure. Um, right. It also looks like you have a clavicle fracture. Okay. You have some rib fractures too, so you did a number on yourself, okay? Our patient who was stabbed but was resistant to getting surgery. I don't want to be cut open. Did end up going to the operating room. There's no sign of bleeding inside the abdomen. And he's recovering very well. I hear that his scar is healing quite nicely. And most importantly, he's alive to, to tell the tale. I got here at 11. They had me in surgery all night. I think I got out. I remember waking up, seeing my mom when I first came in here. That was my main fear, I was that it. scar on my stomach. Why? Are you going to wear a bikini? No, but... <laughs> Come on, I'm 41 years old, and I got a decent shape. Do a tattoo. Just yep, it's a tattoo. tattoo. That's it. It's a tree right here. For your life. I'm alive. I'm alive. I was like, yeah, I'm alive. That's what you got to do. For the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I have some visitors for you. Hey. <laughs> I have. Little boy, how are you, Johnny? John, Joe, and Tim. Uh, Dopey. Oh. Uh, your, your brother, Joseph. There you go. What's up? He had a pretty significant fall, 20, 30 feet pretty high up. Maybe trying to get into your apartment through the roof is not the best idea in the world. Hey, buddy. You good? Yeah, man, thanks. You coming around a little bit? Um, what, what? Do you remember what happened? No, nothing happened. No? Yeah. I didn't fall or anything. No? No. no. I said I did, but I didn't. So he has a very severe concussion, and some of the side effects are memory loss, confusion, disorientation, dizziness, nausea, and then a small, what looks like a small brain bleed. All right, so your, your job is to stay nice and still, OK? All right. So we can fix this uh, cut that's on the back of your head. Ah! One thing that is certainly as possible is what's called traumatic brain injury. It's gonna be fine, he's gonna get through this. He's strong, he's a fighter. He's an incredible person, he's the best of all. Senior, you know your older brother like that. It's tough, man, I've seen him. Nothing you can do is pray. And I told him, hey, I'm gonna be here with him, you know, to do this fight, and uh, <clears throat> he's gonna be all right.
not eat lunch, and about halfway through a sandwich, you just think you get scared from the staff, stop deteriorating. Pressure is 140, pulse is 100. When your sugar is really, really low, like hers, you can get altered mental status, you can have seizures, you can die. What was the initial blood sugar? Right 23 here? Initial, 28. So 23 is a really low blood sugar. Normal would be around 80 to 100. Lay down, get yeah. down. Yeah. 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 You yeah. You yeah. 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 You're okay, yeah, take a slow breath. At 23, your brain cells are really screaming. Mm. Try not to move. Mm. Relax, okay? We're gonna give you some sugar right now, okay? I'm just putting in an IP, you're gonna be all right. Feel a little better? Yeah. You have dangerously low sugar level. Yeah. 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 That was a hypoglycemic emergency. And these are one of those things where you give them sugar and they get better quickly. Oh, much better. Much better. When I have these low sugars, I lose control. And I do get a little ornery. I do, I, that part I just came back to me. <laughs> I'm awful. Special Hi there. Hi. Fancy meeting you here. <laughs> yes. Long story short, we had a blind date. We played carts of all things. He was a terrible card player. I knew there was something there, so <laughs> I followed along. <laughs> we dated for two years and then got married. Yeah. So I feel very, very lucky, very lucky. He is so good to me. Picnic. <laughs> We're gonna have to watch her to make sure her sugar doesn't drop again. How are you feeling? Great. You look much better. Oh, I bet, yes. <laughs> it was scary for a moment there. I guess so. Do you remember any, anything from uh, it? You know what I have to tell you? I don't remember you. Usually people don't say that. People are usually remember me. But, but okay. Isn't that awful? Oh, well, it's nice meeting you. You too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks so much for your help. So we took her off the the sugar drip, and it looks like her sugar is, as long as they're stable, she gets to go home, and uh, she'll follow up with the primary care physician. All right, let's rock and roll. Off we go. Let's go home. <laughs> scary, huh? Yeah. He was climbing up the, the back ladder here to go through the window. This is where he slipped and fell and fell to the ground. So going. Send you some healing. Yeah. Healing life. They're asking him the same questions, getting different answers. Where are you? Sometimes he says Tampa. Sometimes he says at my aunt's house. From what we know so far, um, he's a very, 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 very small bleed in the brain and some contusions from a concussion and then uh, some rib fractures on that left side and then a clavicle fracture. So there's a lot of just watching and waiting. So it will be a couple couple weeks to a couple months before he's back to playing ball. Just tell me. <laughs> it's supposed to be the craziest like family basketball. You guys are all these huge, huge like 6'5 guys. <laughs> We come from a family of five, four boys and a girl, and Tim was a college basketball player as, as the other brothers were, and his, his father was a, an NBA player and an NBA coach and all that stuff. So we come from a basketball pedigree. So he's a tough guy and he's in good shape, and we hope he makes a full recovery. Thank you very much. All right, yeah, great. Yeah, appreciate nice. it. If you guys ever want to play ball, you know where to find me. <laughs> Are you a hooper? Right. Yeah, I right. play. Yeah. <laughs> My brothers are tall, too, so. <laughs> I notified ER, I got an ET about five minutes. I'm an age male patient. 
There's a patient coming from Children's Hospital Boston with an acute heart attack. So time is of the essence here, and we really have to try to get this patient to the cath lab as soon as possible. Hi, Mr. Kudo. Hi. My name is Michelle. I'm a physician assistant. We're going to be helping to take care of you. Things are moving really fast. We'll tell you what's going on. Tell us briefly what brought you to the hospital today. I heard my uh, stepdaughter. She's She was over at Children's. And what happened to you? Okay. I just started having salt like uh, acid Okay. Okay. So your EKG here tells us that you're having a heart attack. Oh, am I? Yes. Oh, jeez. All right. So right now, lots of things are happening right now because we want to get you to a place called the cath lab. We're going to get some blood work on you. We're going to give you some medication. You're in the right place. So I got my girlfriend there. She's probably nervous and all that. I can talk to her. I mean, yeah. I thought it was just... It's reflex, yeah. Okay. Eat crumbs and that's it. <laughs> It's just crazy. I mean, scary, of course, because I have my daughter laying in one bed and then he's being whisked off with a heart attack. So, yes, yeah, definitely scary. Sir, I'm Dr. Cross. I'm the cardiologist that's going to care for you. Things are going to move quickly. The best way we can help your heart is get the artery open as quick as possible. If there's a blockage there, we'll open it right away the balloon and the stent to improve blood flow and anything on the damage. Are we ready to go, guys? We are ready. Just clap in the cab on one time. Great. Good. For about two weeks, he tells us he was getting symptoms of what seemed to him like indigestion. It was his heart when he thought it was his stomach. He happened to be next door in our children's hospital with his daughter for a visit when the pain got so severe that he couldn't stand it anymore. At least you weren't far away. It could have happened at a better place. I know. The DKG would look awful. But he was really lucky that he got here very quickly. Didn't die on the way. Heart didn't stop. If his artery doesn't get open, his heart can stop acutely. So there's actually a stopwatch going. Get that blood pressure under control, Brian, all right? The faster that we can get his artery open, the safer he'll be. So he had a ST elevation heart attack, which meant that there was a complete occlusion of his right coronary artery. It was totally blocked up. He was feeling heartburn, and then he, one morning he woke up and his arm did feel funny. He thought he'd slept on it. We're gonna do heart catheterization. We bring a small catheter up from your wrist, we pass it up to the heart. We inject dye into the heart artery to understand how the blood flows. So all this time I thought it was heartburn. <laughs> all this time you thought it was heartburn. Just putting the IV into which we do the procedure. The whole goal is when an artery is blocked up completely is to restore blood flow, to limit the amount of damage to the heart. Get this through there and then get some flow. Through the catheter, we place a wire down in the artery past the blockage. And these little balloons travel over the wire, and they help to break up the clot. Right, wires across. That is one big, beautiful artery. It's open. Great progress. We got flow down there. You should start feeling much better right now, OK? We're going to work to get a stent in there. We finish up by putting in a little metal scaffold called a stent. Then it looks kind of like the spring in the end of a ballpoint pen. It helps to restore blood flow. Deep breath in and out. Cough for me. Cough. Deep cough. Cough. <coughs> All right, now relax. Pretty good, huh? Stents in. It's nice and big. There's a red and white plus obstructing the artery. The stent's well opposed. It's well sized. They're so great. All right, I think we're done. You're a proud owner of one brand new stent. Yeah, right. The artery's wide open. It looks great. Is that Picked a lucky day to have a heart attack in the hospital, huh? Yeah. How long? I'm definitely grateful. It, it, if it had to happen, it happened where it did. He just happened to be in the right place at the right time. <laughs> It's remarkable and somewhat upsetting the number of people who don't recognize these symptoms as being a heart attack and sit home and ignore it. And they never get to us. They die in their bed. So you're one of the lucky guys that got to us. Yeah.
So if you ever have pain like that again, don't eat a bottle of Tums. Yeah. <laughs> Come into the hospital, because it's real. I lucked out. <laughs> so it wasn't a heartburn. But, yeah, it's like, and here I am. <laughs> It was um, a couple days ago, and I didn't have uh, keys to get into my place. I do remember climbing over the roof because that was the other place to get up there. I don't remember falling one bit. I don't remember where I fell, how hard I fell. He has what we call a grade three concussion with loss of consciousness for, I mean, who knows how long he was out for, actually. Somehow, at the beginning of the year, I started off in the hospital, and that's not always a good sign. It's amazing that he's actually sitting up today, talking, having conversations. Although I imagine he'll recover to where he was before, you know, I can't guarantee that he will, in four or five months now, will be remembering, uh, you know, as well as he did before. It's really hard to tell which way he'll go. It's a matter of time, really. He's, he's a total fighter, and he's in unbelievable shape. He plays basketball, we're a big basketball family, so he's real strong. He's going home tomorrow. My mom's coming, picking her up at the airport. He's ready to go. Right, Tim? He's ready to go home. And we're hoping that when he gets more rest, the spawn in the brain will come down. And He's going to be fine. He's going to be going to cognitive therapy, and we'll go from there. Tim going home makes me feel a little worried, actually. I think it's great physically where he's at, but mentally, he's, he's not there. There's a lot of people praying for him. Somebody that fell off his bike. We're on the Charles River, they refer to as the Esplanade. We get some pretty good crashes on here because it's a very well marked running path, bikeway. Did you see anybody injured up here? On the bike path? No? All right, all right, thank you. This is a tricky part. How you doing? So, so, yeah. You don't remember anything that happened though? No. These guys found him. A second year uh, emergency resident. Just fortunately, yeah, I ran across two couple emergency doctors. It's never a bad thing. And he's a paramedic. It's Boston. Everyone's a doctor. We're in the medical mecca of the world. If you gotta get hurt, you might as well get hurt in Boston. Welcome to the Brazilian chest wax. <laughs> yeah, you want me to do one? No. <laughs> he just started getting hot burn really bad, well, which we thought was hot burn, and then found out he was having a heart attack. He's really lucky. What we opened it with a huge artery and serviced a large portion of his heart. And he was stable enough to get down here, and his heart didn't stop. So the result for him was great. And he should do really, really well. Oh, oh my word. Thank you much. <laughs> no problem. You guys are great. This is a great, great place. Thank you. <laughs> I would say this is one crazy week. I go this way? I go to the cafeteria. I can get that cheeseburger. <laughs> I don't think so. Great to have him back. Six months ago, Tim fell off my roof getting up on the uh, fire escape. I didn't have a set of keys, so he mentioned there was an easy way in <laughs> across the roof. It didn't look so difficult at the time. 
<laughs> I didn't realize he had such horrible balance. <laughs> above, above 10 feet. I still got the shot. I was worried a little bit because of the brain injuries and stuff like that. But I know everything's going to be all right. Just to see someone you love, you know, a brother in pain, and you can't do much about it. That was the hard part about it. Royal flush. <laughs> King high. <laughs> this was you six months ago. Half deck, <laughs> not a full deck. <laughs> now he's back to a full deck. <laughs> he's like a miracle man walking. Uh, that's why I call him a miracle man. It makes me ecstatic to think that I could go through that and have the love and support that I have for my family. Seriously, bro, it's great to have you back, but uh, next time, you know, you're not Spider-Man. You know, wait for you for the other set of keys. These are the He had pain in his chest and then all of a sudden he couldn't walk. We need to get that artery opened up or else he'll lose the leg. On the next, save my life. I'm gonna lose him. If he actually ruptures, he'll just bleed to death. On a strange driver. Involved in a rollover. You got a pretty big cut on your forehead. Oh, well, don't look at it then. All these years I thought he didn't have a brain. Mm -mm -mm. Apparently he does.